Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, we're going to look at the wise man from Matthew 2. Uh, the theme is, so what if Christmas passed you by? So what if Christmas passed you by? And we're going to start with a little film clip. I work as a soup kitchen, carry all the nursing home, and give all that I have to charity, but do not show love to my family, it profits me nothing. If I trim the spruce with shimmering angels and crochet snowflakes, attend a myriad of holiday parties, and sing in the flask and tonic, but do not focus on Christ, I have missed the point. Love stops the cooking to hug a child. Love sets aside the decorating to kiss the husband. Love is kind, though harried and tired. Love doesn't envy another's home. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. Video games will break, pearl necklaces will be lost, golf clubs will rust, but giving the gift of love will endure. Can we show that one more time? Because we kind of missed half of it. Is there a way to get the sound on the first part? Yeah, let's just see it one more time. Okay. If I decorate my house perfectly with plaid bows, strands of twinkling lights, and shiny balls, but do not show love to my family, I'm just another decorator. If I slave away in the kitchen, making dozens of Christmas cookies, and arranging a beautifully adorned table at mealtime, but do not show love to my family, I'm just another cook. If I work at the soup kitchen, carol in the nursing home, and give all that I have to charity, but do not show love to my family, it profits me nothing. If I trim the spruce with shimmering angels and crochet snowflakes, attend a myriad of holiday parties, and sing in the choir's cantata, but do not focus on Christ, I have missed the point. Love stops the cooking to hug a child. Love sets aside the decorating to kiss the husband. Love is kind, though harried and tired. Love doesn't envy another's home. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. Video games will break, pearl necklaces will be lost, golf clubs will rust, but giving the gift of love will endure. So, uh, how did that little film strip uh, ma make you feel? You know, I've watched that thing ten times, at least. Every time I see it, I feel more guilty. <laughs> Every single time I see it, it's like, guilt, 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 you know? All those things that I didn't do, that I should have done, um, all those times I had my priorities fouled up this Christmas. I had, I had my, my boys were both off of college, and, and Jeff, of course, goes to school down in Southern California, so he was home, and, and James had time. Uh, and you know what? I wasted so much time and didn't take uh, uh, and, and, and make quality time when I had the opportunity so often. And, and Jeff goes back tomorrow. James starts another week, and it's gone, and I'm here with, I see that film prep, and I think, guilt, 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 you know? You ever um, have those feelings? I mean, this Christmas has been a wonderful time of celebration, but where has it kind of left you kind of cold? You know what I mean? Where has it kind of passed you by? The one thing that I want you to take home with you, and, and, and you can almost go to sleep after we get done. No, I think I have some pretty good stuff to say otherwise, all right? <laughs> But the one thing I want to take home with you is this. Christmas passed the wise men by. They got there late. But Jesus was still there. 
waiting for him. I don't know how far away you are from Christmas or what part of your life is far away from Christmas. I don't know where the inner joy that Christ gives has been replaced by struggle because you may be bought into the world's message that Christmas is all about being happy and healthy and wealthy right now. And if you're not happy and have a smile on your face and everything's cool in your life, then something wrong with you. I don't know what desert you're traveling in. I don't know where Christmas has become a struggle for you and you feel far, far from the Christ child. All I know is that he's still waiting for you. They were late. Now, it was in God's plan they were late. But from a human perspective, they missed it. Have you ever asked yourself why God planned it that way? We always want to put the wise men right up with the scene of the baby in the manger, right? And the shepherds are there, oh, the wise men are here too, right? But they weren't. Why did God do it that way? And by the way, He did it with a group of people that were on the outside, that were separated from God's people, that everyone else would look their nose and look down their noses at. They were forgotten, and they didn't, other, the, 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 God, the people of God never even knew they, they existed over here. You ever wonder why he brought them late? But Jesus was still waiting for him. Maybe one thing that we're supposed to take from the wise men is even when Christmas passes us by, whether, whether it's because of ourselves, of our sinfulness, or because of the struggles that we have to go through, or maybe because we had to work up until Christmas Eve and we were dead tired trying to celebrate after cooking up, making all those cookies and doing all the gifts and, and all we are trying to do is get it done. No matter how far we are from Christmas, the Christ child is still waiting for us. No matter if we missed it or not, doesn't go away. He stayed put for the wise men. And he's always there for you. Because look at the wise men. God doesn't leave you stranded. And the first thing I kind of want you to remember is he comes to get you. I love this. He comes to get you. You know, the wise men were far away from the land of Palestine. They weren't part of God's people. In fact, it's a great question mark. Scholars kind of debated, how did they know anyway about even the promise of a Savior, let alone that the, promise, the Savior was supposed to come from the Jewish people and that there was going to be a star in the sky and they were supposed to fall. How did they know all that stuff? And there's some obscure text in the book of Numbers that kind of talks about the star of Jacob is going to come. And, 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 and most, most, folks, I'm sorry, most folks think that because the Jews were dispersed all over by the Babylonians that somehow the Jewish text got in the hands of these wise men and they studied it and they believed in the true God and they saw this text and they saw the star and they went, I get it, we're going to go follow it. You think God's Spirit had anything to do with us? You think God's Spirit maybe through that text called to their hearts. God went to get the wise men. And he comes to get us. My, my family, we're, we're going through an old uh, devotional book by a man named uh, Herman Gockel. Uh, anybody don't know that name? I'm just curious. It was, uh, he, he's long since with the Lord. But, but his story is that he was a Lutheran pastor and he lost his voice. 
Now, now that's kind of tough to be a pastor if you lose your voice, right? He couldn't talk at all. And he didn't know what he was going to do. He didn't know how, uh, you know, what he was supposed to do with his life and, and if he was supposed to be a pastor anymore. And, and he started writing. And lo and behold, the Lord had given him a wonderful gift to write. And, and so we're reading through these devotions. And he's a man who knows grace. The undeserved love of God just poured down upon us in Jesus. He knows grace. You see it in every devotion. And he tells this one story. It's a true story. About a man uh, up, up in the northwest, uh, up the Washington area. And, and uh, a, a little boy, he got lost, and he was lost all night long. And everybody was looking for him, and the dad was looking for him all night long. And, and, and just as the sun w- w- was peeping o- over the horizon, you know, c- coming up, uh, the, the father was out looking, and he kind of tripped over a log that was, had been covered by snow, except this log moved. And, and it was this little boy. And the little boy gets up, and he looks at his dad, and he says, Daddy, I found you at last! God comes to get us. He never writes us off. We can be in a faraway desert land. And God, in His wondrous grace, His undeserved love, comes to get us. Whispers to our hearts of His great love and His Savior. Right now, whatever desert you're in, no matter where or how far you are away from Christmas, God's Spirit is whispering to your heart. It's true. He loves you so much. Like this wonderful song we did. Who loves you that much? God does. And when you're so far lost and so far away from Christmas that you can never find your way back, He comes to get you. I've said this a couple of times in in my time here, but I I always come back to this. Uh, When my son, James, was was growing up, there was a time in his life when maybe eight months or a year, and something good would happen, and he'd raise his hand and he'd go, Yes! Yes! Right now! (laughs) God's Spirit is touching your heart. And these words that I'm saying about Him coming to you, He's saying, yes, it's true. God doesn't leave you stranded. He's there on the journey to guide you. We know the story of the wise men, don't we? They just kind of set off and, and wander around. They had a star to guide them, didn't they? Did you know that in the Bible, Jesus is called the bright morning star? What is he called? The bright morning star. They had this miracle of, of a star up in the heavens. It's an absolute miracle, not like any other star. But it pales in comparison to the morning star of Jesus. The one who was born on Christmas. The one who took on our deserts and our emptiness and our struggles. And who won. A star that says not even the darkness of death can put me out. Because I won on Easter morning. Whatever desert you're in, wherever your journey is in a horrible, tough place, God is whispering to your heart right now the darkness cannot ever overcome the light. The star. The star of righteousness. The great morning star. Jesus Christ. He will lead you every day. Just as He led the wise men. And He will never, ever, ever leave you nor forsake you. I love this word grace. We, 
we, we sang it, grace flows down over me. This is grace. It's undeserved love. He comes and gets us when we're in the desert. When we can't find our way back, He comes to get us to bring us to Christmas. And in that journey, He never leaves us. His, his grace surrounds us. As I say to some people who are struggling, I don't know the answers. All I know is that I see the, imp- the, the imprints of the nails in His hands. And I know that He loves you. He will never leave you. He will walk every step of the way. And He will guide you and keep you safe in His love. And when the wise men got there, when the shepherds were gone, when the angels were but a dull memory, when it wasn't the picturesque manger scene, but a hard scrabble house where a young family was trying to make it on next to nothing, when the wise men came there, Jesus was waiting. Through all of the rough journey, now think about that. They came face to face with evil incarnate in Herod. Through all of the horrible journey, the difficult journey, the dangerous journey, the grace of God saw them through. And when they came face to face with Christmas, Christ child is there. So no matter no matter how late you are for Christmas, no matter how much you see that, that film strip and, and are guilty because Christmas has passed you by and you maybe emphasize the wrong things and major to minors, no matter what desert you're in. In God's grace, the Christ child still waits for you. He comes to your desert. He brings you to Himself. He comes to you face to face and says, I am here for you. You can rest in my grace. You know, we always talk about the wise men bringing these great gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh, right? And, and, and the text, uh, we, a lot of folks say, well, they knew he was a king. They knew he was a king. And, and I'm not saying that's wrong, but I think the wise men knew they were late. I think they knew that apart from God's grace, they would never have known about the Savior. Apart from God's grace, they never would have survived the trip. Apart from God's grace, they would never have found Jesus. And apart from God's grace, He never would have been waiting for them. And I think the treasures, the reflection of their hearts being touched by this wondrous love of God in Jesus. And so they gave Him themselves first, all they had. And whatever flowed from that. We can give Jesus the great treasure of our lives. And we can give to others the great treasures of His grace. We receive His grace. We give His grace. And that's Christmas. Merry Christmas.